we only talked about u0 is equal to a fixed value let's say x uh, let's say uh, y okay and in this case this boundary condition is going to appear in our right hand side d d d t of my solution u vector is equal to a matrix times u vector plus a constant term and the constant term u0 uh, the u0 is going to appear here as u0 over delta x squared okay and today we are going to introduce the Newman boundary condition. So this is called the Dirichlet boundary condition under the name of a mathematician. And we are also going to talk about Newman boundary condition, that is du dx at, let's say, x equal to 1, the right-hand side, is equal to, let's say, z. This is called Newman boundary condition. Newman boundary condition is going to affect the discretization of the right-hand side. So the partial derivative of u at x equal to, at x, let's say, n minus 1, is going to be discretized as u of n plus u of n minus 2 minus 2 u n minus 1 divided by delta x square, right? And we already said that one way to discretize this is saying un minus un minus 1, a consistent way of discretizing this, which means delta x goes to 0, the approximation error goes to 0. This can be used to approximate the derivative. Now we know this is equal to z. So that establishes a linear relationship between un and un minus 1. So if we plug this into here, what we get is un is going to disappear and become un minus 1 plus z delta x and plus un minus 2 minus 2 un minus 1. So you can collect these two terms, and instead of minus 2, I'm going to erase this, and this becomes minus 1. Right, so that's one way of dealing with the Newman boundary condition, which instead of setting the value to something, you set the derivative to something. The Newman boundary condition, this is when uh, I'm setting the boundary condition at the right, when uh, the, at the last right. point. If I have a Newman boundary condition at the left, it's similar. I'm going to use u1 and u0 as opposed to un and un minus 1. Right? Okay. So if you look at this formula, this has two effects. One effect is there a z term, right? So z over delta x, which is going to go to the constant term in this equation. All the others are zero. Second is that it is modifying the coefficients of u n minus 1 specifically. So all the rest of this scheme get minus 2 over delta x squared minus 2 over delta x squared. But the last, very last one is going to get minus 1 over delta x squared. Right. All the other terms stay the same. Oops. Right. So it is modifying this. And it is also adding that. So Newman boundary condition has the effect of both modifying the matrix and adding something on the right hand side. Yes? So, so you have a
So you have a first order approximation for boundary condition. Would that cause the whole solution be first order accurate? That's a very good question. So here I have a first order approximation just on one point, right? And for many equations, including this one, so the answer is equation dependent. For this particular equation, it will not affect the quality of the entire solution, right? But that's only for specific equations. You have to do analysis for, for different equations. And if you just want to be safe, you can derive a second order approximation for the boundary condition also. All right. Any other questions? This is still n minus 1 by n minus 1 because we get a u n minus 1 and u n minus 2. An, an, an alternative way, so there is a lot of ways to deal with boundary conditions. A different way is to extend the solution all the way to u n. And if you do that, you should be using both, I mean, you can use both the differential equation and the boundary condition to derive the evolution of the last grid point, dun dt. Yeah, if you want to take that approach, we can talk about that. All right. Yeah, yeah you have a question? So, yeah, so z is just now a function of time, right? Z, yeah, is a, just another function of time. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you use a center difference to approximate the derivative at un, it actually changes things because it will involve un plus 1. And un plus 1, there is no way you should include un plus 1 in the solution. So in order to cancel un plus 1, you also need to discretize the differential equation, the heat equation, at un itself at the right boundary. So now you have a differential equation, you have a boundary condition, both involves u n plus 1. You use them to cancel it. So that's how you would do it if you want to use central difference. And you have another term that you're using for the slope that boundary would take boundary? Pardon? Yeah, okay, so let me let me say so alternative is I'm also going to derive an equation for dun dt which is equal to un plus 1 minus un minus 1 uh, plus un minus 1 minus 2un. And I have the central difference approximation over 2 delta x equal to z, right? So that means u n plus 1 is equal to u n minus 1 plus 2 z delta x. I plug it into here, that will give me u n minus 1 plus 2 z delta x. So that is replacing u n plus 1 plus u n minus 1 minus 2 u n over delta x squared. So we're going to see, instead of combining with u n, we are combining with u n plus, oh, minus 1. So we are still going to change both the matrix and right hand side, but in a slightly different way. We are also adding the vector by one additional entry to include un also as a variable to solve. So that's how that's the best way to do it when you want to use a central difference to approximate the derivative.